Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. This is the third video in my new series on Ice Age cultures of Europe. People that lived tens of thousands of years earlier than those of pre-pottery Neolithic sites of ancient Anatolia. But with clear artistic ingenuity, with well developed skills to make effective tools and hunting weapons, and an ability to carve objects like animal figurines and musical instruments. They were not mere primitive hunter-gatherer cavemen and women, they were people with real skills and a real culture. In my last two videos we looked at the Lion Man statue of Hollenstein Stardal Cave, as well as the incredible animal figurines of Vogelherd, both sites being situated in the Swabian Jura Mountains of southern Germany. In this video, we are looking at a relic from the nearby cave of Geisenklostel, probably said incorrectly but spelt correctly on the screen. Inside this ancient cave, Archaeologists found one of the oldest human sculptures ever discovered in Europe, and this is known as the Adorant. It's a flat piece of mammoth ivory and measures just 38mm long, 14mm wide and 4.5mm in depth. It is incredibly small, but it's also incredibly important to the human story. The cave in which it was found is situated at the Brockfels Rock Formation in the Swabian Jura Mountains in Germany, 60 metres above the valley floor, which is part of the widespread drainage basin of the Proto-Danube river system. Geisenklostel was once part of a much larger cave system, and this collapsed long before the first human occupation in the Middle Paleolithic. It was first explored in the 1960s and was found to contain traces of prehistoric art dating back to between 43,000 and 30,000 years ago, therefore belonging to the Aurignacian culture, the same people responsible for the lion man and animal figurines of my previous two videos. Excavations took place in 1973 and 1991 and recommenced in 2001, with a number of incredible artefacts uncovered. In the Geisenklustel cave we find perforated fox teeth, tusks from baby mammoths, and also bones from unborn wild horses. There is also a beautiful flute and flute fragments, a painted stone, and various stone and bone tools. There was also a fragment of a musical instrument, thought to be a type of idiophone. This is a 35 to 40,000 year old mouth bow, which would have been strung end to end with a taut cord, which when plucked made a sound. One end is placed in front of the mouth, and when strummed, the musician changes the size and shape of their mouth cavity, and this changes the musical pitch. We also find two toggle ivory buttons, various examples of jewellery, and yet more amazing animal figurines, including the famous standing bear, this ivory mammoth, as well as a detailed bison. But the standout find from the cave is the Adorant, this small rectangular plaque of mammoth ivory, which was found in 1979 and probably dates between 32,000 and 35,000 years ago. One side has been cut, smoothed and carved, and the other side and four edges were finely notched. The first side has either a human figure carved onto it, or maybe a hybrid type figure like a human lion. It's known as the Adorant because its arms are raised up like an act of worship, but of course it could be like this for any number of reasons, including just pointing to the sky, gesturing some kind of greeting, or maybe having a threatening stance. Its legs are open, and some claim that a belt and sword can also be seen, although these could be the natural features of the weathered ivory, or the sword could simply be the man's phallus. On the reverse side and also on the four edges are a series of notches with a clear intentional pattern. The edges contain a total of 39 notches in groups of 6, 13, 7 and 13. On the back there are 49 more notches, arranged in 4 vertical lines of 13, 10, 12 and 13, plus a further notch that could be in either of the middle two lines. 
What the notches mean is open to debate, but there is a body of thought they could be time related. The total number of notches is 88, which coincides with the number of days in three lunations, which is 88.5. FYI, a lunation is one lunar phase cycle, which lasts around 29.5 days, the time between successive new moons. Interestingly, according to a Dr. Michael Rappengluck, it is also the approximate number of days that the prominent star Betelgeuse in the constellation of Orion disappeared from view each year around 33,000 years ago. It can't be seen from around 14 days before the spring equinox, and it rises again around 19 days before the summer solstice. This means that Orion was in the sky for around 9 months every year, which of course is also the duration of a human pregnancy, which may well have been noted as a significant coincidence by the Aurignacian culture, maybe even ritualistic. Maybe the people tried to time conception close to the rising of Orion in the early summer, knowing that it would mean that birth would take place nine months later, after a severe Ice Age winter when Orion disappears. This would also allow sufficient nutrients for the newborn baby before the beginning of the next winter. Timing conception 88 days after the disappearance of Orion from the night sky could therefore be a way to enhance the survival of newborns. So, the theory is that the Aurignacian people use a special object like this, to count the days after Orion disappeared, to keep track of time, so they knew when to try and conceive. As stated, this is the hypothesis from Dr. Michael Rappengluck, and it made the news back in 2003. He believes the figure on the front of the ivory plaque is a portrayal and personification of the Orion constellation. There looks to be a sword between the person's legs, and this together with a narrow waist, and the fact the left leg is shorter than the right, is all indicative of the constellation of Orion. To him, the proportions of the person being portrayed on the plaque do match up quite well. The sword apparently corresponds with the Orion Nebula beneath the belt. Apparently the stars of Orion were in a slightly different position 32,000 to 33,000 years ago, because the key stars in the constellation move at different speeds in different directions. The change isn't drastic, but it is noticeable to astronomers, and Rappengluck modelled it on computer software noticing that the figure matches up with the old constellation very well. Sadly, I can't find a visual for this correlation. The whole concept does seem very interesting, even possible, especially as survival was so difficult in the harsh world of the Ice Age, and the stars, moon and planets could well have been markers to keep time. It is a bold hypothesis, and by no means conclusive, but it does link the iconography on one side of the plaque with the notches on the other side and the edges. If this is Orion, it wouldn't just be some random picture of a constellation with no context. The notches give it context and means we can relate it to timekeeping, based on the appearance of the star Betelgeuse in the night sky, which could have had importance relating to conception, birth and survival in the harsh Ice Age world. I also found it interesting we have the remains of baby mammoths, as well as the bones from unborn horses inside the cave, giving this site an association with birth and babies. Even if the Orion hypothesis is wrong, and the Moon hypothesis is the one that's correct, this may well be supported by another archaeological find, this time from the later Gravettian era. The Venus of Lorcel is a limestone-based relief of a nude woman, around 25,000 years old and found in France. It is very similar in shape to the Aurignacian Venus figurine from the nearby Holfels cave in Germany, and as you can see she's holding a horn, which some think may signify a crescent moon, giving the goddess a lunar association. 
Maybe the Adoran plaque had a dual purpose, related to both lunar cycles and also the Orion conception and birth cycle. Or maybe people are just overthinking it, and it has no astronomical association at all. We really don't know. The hypothesis does require a number of assumptions, and more work and supporting archaeology are essential. But it's certainly an interesting concept that got my attention. Work that was done by a credible source, a doctor with a degree in the history of astronomy, and who is or was the president of the Society of Archaeoastronomy in Germany. What we do know is that the Aurignacian people did have a culture. It seems they did have a belief system, and we know they did have intelligence. In all honesty, we still know so little about these people, but the archaeological discoveries are just as surprising as they are amazing. All of the finds from the Swabian Jura Caves meant something to the people living here 30 to 40,000 years ago, and all indications are that these were not a primitive culture. This object may well be a carved figure representing the constellation of Orion. But the problem is, we have no way of knowing whether or not the Aurignacian culture even recognised patterns in the sky in the same way as later cultures. We are trying to piece the scraps of evidence together, and because of the age of the finds, it's probably an impossible task to truly understand such ancient people. But to think that this small plaque could be the first ever representation of a constellation, and the fact that that constellation is Orion, which of course had such importance to later cultures, well, right or wrong, it really is a truly wondrous idea. There was no artificial light pollution 30 to 40,000 years ago, and so the moon, stars and planets would surely have captivated the inquisitive prehistoric human mind. Just a few weeks ago, I myself was quite excited when I managed to take this photograph of Orion using only an iPhone from my front door. And so, to think that this small plaque could be a representation of the same constellation, well, for me personally it is a somewhat romantic thought. Of course I do hope it is, but in truth, we'll probably never know for sure. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.